is still plus politics. Now, the Federal High Court in Abuja has set aside a, the candidacy of Anduba as flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress APC in the recent governorship election held in Anambra State. Now, Judge Inyangeko, while delivering the judgment, held that Uba was never a candidate in the poll, having emerged from an illegally conducted primary election by the All Progressive Congress. Equal held that the plaintiff, George Mogalu, succeeded in proving that the APC did not conduct a valid primary election, which Uba claimed to have won as the party's flag bearer in the election. The court ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to delete Uba's name from its record as a candidate in the election and the APC to refund the plaintiff uh, to 22.5 million naira that he paid for expression of interest and nomination forms since the party had failed to conduct a valid primary. Now, joining us to discuss this imbroglio is Raymond Kanebe. He is a legal practitioner and, of course, a Mekangwa Dioke, who's also a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you very much. Mr. Wadeke, you obviously um, were part of the elections in Anambra. You seem to be documenting every step of the way. So it's best to start with you to have this conversation. From the get-go, a lot of people had criticized the primaries um, in the APC. Many people had fingered Uba as not a legit candidate to be even the flag bearer of the APC. I remember speaking with the information commissioner from Anambra State, and he was speaking about the fact that nobody had any or showed up in Anambra State to support the Anduba campaign, that they never saw any senior member of the party uh, in Anambra helping him to um, canvass for votes uh, for the election. Uh, but looking at what Justice Nyangeko has said, where does this leave the APC and, of course, the credibility of the party at all levels. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I can assure you it leaves uh, the FPC in a very precarious uh, situation, especially as regards its uh, petition at the tribunal, because um, obviously the, the courts have jurisdiction, just as uh, the Supreme Court has uh, pronounced several that the courts have jurisdiction to inquire into the validity of the primaries conducted by the parties and that the parties have a duty to abide not only by the electoral act but also by their constitution and uh, if you look at even the apc constitution um it uh, it obviously has uh, um, very clear provisions as regards uh, conduct of primaries and um, you know specifically you can say that the constitution imbues the process with uh, you know um, internal democracy but in practice um, what happened in Anambra obviously leaves a lot to be desired because um, where you see a situation where maybe in fact immediately after the primaries 11 out of the 14 candidates held a press conference, you know, led by um, uh, this same uh, Chief Judge Morgan. I tend to mind you, say, you know, saying that the, 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 um, the, the conduct of the primaries was very questionable. Yeah. So, um, and uh, you also see even the, the leader of the party, so to speak, in the state, you know, Chief um, uh, Dr. Uh, Chris Ngige, who is not only a former governor, but a former senator, a city minister, you know, coming to question the uh, primaries conducted in his own backyard. And several also, um, there, there were definitely major issues with the... Not I, on, I, not I know that you're not a member of the issues. APC, but I mean, it, 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 it begs the question, why did the APC allow it to go this far? Because if, if these people, high-ranking officers within the party, including... Um, you know, the Honourable Minister, um, that they all came out to, you know, query this process. Why did the APC not nib it in the board? Because these are questions that are begging the answers. And now the APC owes 22.5 million naira to Mr. Mogalu, of course, because they call the whole process a sham. I'm sure it will owe a, owe a lot of other people. I'm sure it will owe other 
I know that uh, for sure Mr. Maxwell Okoye is in court. That he's been challenging that process. And uh, several of the uh, candidates may even have to court to claim uh, their 22.5 million. But uh, going back to your question, you recall that the party leadership actually set up uh, a two-man uh, um, you know, panel uh, headed by the Lagos State Governor, uh, Mr. Songwulu, to reconcile the uh, feuding uh, candidates, but uh, feuding aspirants. But apparently, that did not yield uh, any, any fruit. Um, so because, again, when you see that the process is fundamentally for flawed, what are you reconciling? And you will equally even worry uh, about the, uh, the party leadership endorsing that process, which was uh, a blatant rape of uh, democracy, really, so mm -hmm. to speak. Because, uh, like I was saying, you have a situation where maybe um, 230,000 uh, persons were said to have voted for the candidate. But uh, during the election, uh, you could only poll uh, 43,000. In fact, the entire election, um, the four major candidates, uh, ABGA, PDP, APC, and YPP, mm -hmm. The votes polled by, um, you know, uh, supposedly polled by uh, Mr. Ba, only, only, only fell short by um, 379 votes, 380 votes, short of the entire votes that were polled by the four parties, you know, during the election. So you can imagine uh, that well, something I, I guess a lot of questions right. need to be answered, but let me come to Raymond. There are pundits, political pundits, are saying that the biggest mistake that Andrew Barr made was to drag out this case of him being um, that he should have been rightfully the winner of this elections, or that he was one way or the other robbed. Yeah. That if he had not pursued this, he probably would not be in this position. But let's just examine the personality of Andrew Barr. Even before the elections, there were so many issues yeah. that arose as his candidacy yeah. made news. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You know, the man Andy Barr has been a very, um, in fact, the family as it has been a very notorious family when it comes to Anambra politics. And him and his other brother have been at the forefront of these whole issues around the family, the uh, senator, the Okija Shrine scenario in 2003, how he became the governor of the state for 17 days at some point, and all of that. So he has been, he's a popular, uh, he has a first name recognition in the state, albeit for controversial reasons. So going into the polls, all of those issues were going to come to the backlight. And we saw him struggle with all of this process, even as, as he also tried to, 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 to campaign. Um, talking about the whole, um, the whole primary process and how, why the party was not able to, to manage it, I agree with my learned friend that it has to do with uh, the the, how the process was fundamentally flawed so that there was no, it was difficult to actually get warring parties to come to uh, a compromise. Mm -hmm. So apparently it turned out that um, since Mr. George Mohalu was not going to um, was not going to be convinced otherwise, he had to take out that originating summons. And from the word go, I already knew that this judgment was going to be the way it is. Mm. Because uh, the, the, the INEC report of that process damnified it totally. The INEC report said that the election, as it were, did not hold. As at 5.30 p.m., the primary elections had not commenced. Mm. So it was just that, af that ev evidence that the Federal High Court relied upon to say that, well, if INEC, who is a regulator and uh, who was saddled with that role to monitor the process, is saying that, come, we did not see this process play out. That means the process is not, um, couldn't have taken place. And it, it, it also makes me go back to the APC at the national level because we see all of these same kinds of teething problems um, going on or because we see mostly every time the APC is constituting some committee to yeah, reconcile, issues, you know, yeah, these yeah. differences here yeah, and there. Yeah. Why not deal with the processes uh, or the issues at the roots? Yeah. I mean, deal with the root cause of the problems instead of having this committee. Because we're seeing so many of them. But there's one in Ekiti, yeah. there's one in Kwara, River place, State, I mean, Zamfara. Place, it's, I mean, I name I them. With you. It has to do with the zero-sum game of politics and politicians being unable to look at the bigger picture. You understand. If you recall what happened in Zamfara State, where the parties had actually the party had actually won the election, it was just for it to manage that internal division, and it wasn't able to manage it, and it eventually lost the whole uh, the the uh, lost the election that actually won. Mm -hmm. So it has to do with the nature of politics with play, the zero sum nature of politics, politicians trying to 
um, outdo each other by all means. Otherwise, there was a committee that was, um, that was set up to see how these 14 aspirants in the APC could rally around uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Andrew Bant. It's okay, just go. Since at the end of the day, if the party wins, we all win. Yeah. But they couldn't come to any any compromise. And unfortunately for the party, uh, they are in this very difficult situation. The petition it had, it had fired against the uh, victory of um, Soludo and Abga. I don't. I wonder what is going to be. What is going to happen with it? Well, as as we speak, uh, there's a, a story in the papers about. The mockery that um, the Afghan yeah the, the, the Afghan national chairman yes, was, they're was, making was, fun was, was of making the fun whole of them. But they said they have gone on appeal. They are going to challenge that decision. Because if they are not going to challenge the decision, what it means is that Abga could come to the tribunal and say that, well, this petition should be struck out because the person who seeks to uh, assert a right, the, 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 he, he no longer has that right to actually make this claim since, that, since his candidacy has been nullified by a court. But since they are going to go on appeal, I assume they'll get a stay of execution of that judgment so that the matter at the tribunal can continue pending the determination of that appeal. Yeah. By the end of the day, I, 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 hate, to, I hate to be optimistic, uh, to pessimistic, but I don't see the, the petition yielding any fruit for the party. Let me come back to you, um, Barsamadio Kate. It's when we look at all of these things that are, be, that are playing out, and it's not that we're trying to put the APC on the chopping board, but they are already on the chopping board for tonight. So let's talk about it. In 2023, we're seeing all of these teaching problems. Not that this doesn't say that the PDP doesn't have its problems. They do have their problems. But if the, P, the APC is not unable to have a democratic process within the party in itself, who's to say that they can stand as a formidable force to fight against every other political party they'll be facing in 2023? Yes, definitely uh, they're going to have major challenges if they don't uh, put their house in order, so to speak. Because uh, you keep seeing this issue recurring uh, all over the place. Um, if you look at even the total of uh, cases, you see that you know it's been a kind of recurring decimal. So, you are suddenly right that unless they put their house in order, going into, and you just have uh, uh, next year, you know, to go into the election. And even, uh, so it's going to pose a major challenge for them. And um, you also even discover that uh, uh, even by the Supreme Court's decision uh, in the um, Undo governorship uh, case, even the leadership, the caretaker committee, is uh, on uh, quick sound. So uh, all kinds of uh, legal uh, challenges and hurdles being thrown uh, at the party. So they really need to put their house in order in order to uh, be able to have a fighting chance in uh, 2023. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you very much, Raymond Kanebe and Mekka Mwadi Uke, are both legal practitioners. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Well, what uh, comes out of the appeal remains to be seen, I guess. Thank you. For all right. Us. Thank you. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, it's been Plus Politics. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. We'll uh, leave you with what Nigerians have to say about the president rejecting the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And of course, I'll see you tomorrow. I am Mary Anako. <laughs>is not competent to vote. That's why people are saying, you're asking this question. If it's competent, they will accept it in the, in the house that, okay, it's fine. But that's why it's not competent. Today issues, tomorrow issues, here and there, to me. So that's the fact. I don't want to say much on this, because the Nigerian politics is upside down. Yeah, the reason that the president said there is no go for the direct primary election, because, you know, when they say direct, at times, some people used to do uh, wrong, they will cheat, they will do evils, they will take, they will use the opportunity, they will hijack the, uh, the, the agent, the agent, the agent, 
they, they will hijack them, they, they, they will hijack the Asian, they will bribe them and take over. That is why it's better they should do the right thing so that the things will move forward.